Hi everyone, welcome back to the Scrapbooking Photographer. Linda is my name and today I'm joining you for a mixed media mayhem hop. The sketch that we've been given for inspiration is just delightful. Have a look at that. At first I was a little bit daunted by it, but the more I've thought about it, the more I really want to give it a go. And um, as usual, I've left it till the last minute to do anything about it. So we'll see how we go. Um, the first thing that you'll see is this cut file that's been used here by um, Missy, who designed this sketch. And it's a dream catcher. So it brought about a whole lot of different ideas. So I did go to my Cricut. And I have cut out a dream catcher and uh, I'm going to put a picture of my first golden retriever and her puppies in there. And the title of this page is going to be Dreams Do Come True because this is something that I always wanted to do. So that is a wee way off. The first thing we're going to do is get the background prettied up, gone ahead and gutted the back of a piece of toffee cardstock and then I'm using mink as my background. It's just a little bit darker than white and because close to my heart papers come in two tones I have got the dream catcher also in mink but I'm going to use it on the light side. But the first thing we've got to do to, before we can put any of it together is some mixed media on this piece. So to do this I'm going to just put a whole heap of Distress Oxide ink onto all-purpose mat and I'm using Dusty Concord, Mermaid Lagoon, um, Kitsch Flamingo, Mustard Seed, and a little bit of antique linen. Now I have had a couple of goes at this um, and you can substitute that for a couple of disasters. I'm now on to my last piece of mink cardstock so if this doesn't work this video won't be happening. But what I have discovered is that it needs to be very wet to get the effect that I want. So I'm spraying these with quite a bit of water and letting them react. Then I'm going to use my brayer just to mix them up a bit. Now if I just transferred it directly onto the page with the brayer then I would get kind of stripy lines. Um, so what I'm going to do is take my piece of mint cardstock, just turn it upside down and soak it. And we get a little bit of a runny kind of effect there. And I'm just going to pick up the rest of it. And I do want it on that left hand side. So it is quite wet and the colours all blend so you don't get the, the same colours as you put down there. They blend together and you just get a bit of a mixture. Um, not sure if that's what I want but we'll go with it for now and I would like a little bit more purple so I'm going to put a bit more of the Dusty Concord on there just on its own. Now I'm not mixing, not uh, cleaning anything in between and then I just want a little bit more of that over there, over that side. I'll just tidy up a few little bits, just spread it around a bit. And then with my paper towels, I'll just blotch it. It's still not as vibrant as I would like. So we'll leave that to dry and I'll be back with a clean desk and ready for the next stage. Okay, so we're drying up. Now while it's still drying, I'm going to add a little bit of gold shimmer brush 
and that is just a matter of tapping it around uh, to get the droplets that will glisten in the light. Okay, so you can see if I hold that up, you can see a little bit of shine there. Okay, so we'll just leave that to dry a little bit more. Okay, while that's drying, I just want to add a little bit of toffee ink to the Dreamweaver so it's going to blend in with the uh, frame around the outside and bring a little bit of that darker in. I was going to keep it light, but I don't think that's the right thing to do. So to do that, I'm just going to use the ink pad upside down and kind of just brush it over different parts. I don't want it to be even because these are kind of feathers. So I'm just dotting it to get the colour effect. Okay, then to help that blend in with the rest, I'm also going to add a little bit of the gold shimmer to that too. Hopefully some of it will get onto the cardstock because there's a lot going around the outside of it. Okay. Right, I'll pop that over to dry as well. So, assuming this is dry, <clears throat> I don't think it's quite dry yet, but it's not far away. Um, I've got some DMC glitter, gold glitter uh, thread. It's six stranded. So it's uh, DMC number is E3821. And I've used it in some embroidery projects, but I just like the way that the strands separate here. So I'm going to thread some through uh, those holes. So I'll just cut a length off. Good, good idea to keep everything all together to do this because otherwise it's going to get very difficult very quickly. So that's why I've folded the cotton over rather than working with six loose strands. We've got the folded version, which gives us a little bit more solid to go through without having to get a needle or anything like that to go through these relatively big holes. All right, so you get the idea of this. So I'll finish that off and show you when it's done. Okay, so I've threaded it through there and I'm just going to put a little bit of sticky underneath just to keep these bits where I want them rather than flying off uh, and not sitting squarely. And the same on the back with these ones because I want them to follow the uh, shape of the Dreamcatcher. Okay. okay, so I can just pop that to one side, continue drying, and we'll get the photo ready. Now the photo, as I mentioned, is of my girl Cassie, uh, just after she'd had eight puppies. And you can see that it has been uh, in an area that has dried the front a little bit. It's a little bit cracked, and there's different shades on here. So I'm going to crop those bits off. And I'll be very pleased to get this into an album and get it uh, safely preserved. So she's still got a little bit of the darker around it, but it <laughs> gives it a little bit of a vignette, really. Um, so to mount that, I'm going to use some papers from the Life's a Hoop range from Close to My Heart, mainly because I like the different colours that uh, come with it. The purple itself doesn't really work too much against that but the lined colors I think will work well so we'll bring in the back piece just to give an idea of some colors that we've got doesn't look anything like the sketch we were showing but that's okay so I just want to make sure that the colors I choose to back this photo go with both the photo and with what we've ended up on here so I think that one will go quite well and I'm also thinking that this blue pinky one, that will go quite well also. 
So if we look at the sketch, you can see that there are uh, several different layers underneath the photo, which is, it's really good to look at what other people do with the sketch, even if yours doesn't turn out exactly the same, and mine certainly won't turn out anything like this, um, but the ideas that are there that you can um, manipulate and include in your own style and in your own way is uh, a really good idea. So we've got probably four or five different layers of um, backing paper. Okay, so I've just made it uh, not exactly the same, but it's not too far off. And I'm just going to leave this piece like that and uh, let it just do half the job. Okay, I'm also going to bring in for a little piece of toffee underneath because that will kind of uh, work with what's on the background as well. Okay, so we've got this kind of thing happening here thing is that if you keep these too small then you don't see any of the pattern paper but if you keep them too big you start detracting from the photo itself so it's a little bit of um, trial and error to get the right amount that suits your style and what you want on your image. Okay, now I also want to put some vellum in there and I've got stacks of different bits of vellum that I've collected over the years so um, one option is to use some plain, but I don't think it really goes with the mink uh, cardstock. So then there's this one, which is kind of the brownie, but I think that's too heavy. This one might be quite good. It's sort of a, a purpley colour, so I think we'll grab a piece of that. So I haven't measured any of these. I've just cut bits. Some of them were already cut that size. I uh, was just looking to see if there's another piece of vellum that I can put on the other side, but some of them are a little bit, uh, a little bit bright. That piece might be quite a good idea. That's quite subtle. Right. Okay, so then we have some good layers. We've got one, two, three, four, five different layers. And I'm going to go around and just trim the edges and distress the outsides. So this one first. So I have been um, just using the blade of my scissors to distress. But somebody I saw on YouTube the other day suggested that you don't need to use the inside of your blade and risk ruining the... Um, the sharpness you can use the outside so I'm keeping them closed this time and just going around uh, with the with the outside of the scissors which I thought was a great tip I'm sorry I can't remember um, who I got that from now but I like it so I'm just going to go around the outside of these and I'll just do one to show you before I go off camera and do the rest I'm just uh, one side to go and then I'm going to another thing you could do is rip them uh, that has the same kind of distress look uh, or you could sand them so let's do that and then I'm going to also just bend the bit in around the outside too just to give it that uh, roughed up kind of edgy look so, oh, I must admit, I was so worried about this um, layer, and I nearly didn't do it. But now it's coming together. I'm quite excited to see how it is at the end. Okay, so that's going to be the roundabout where Cassie goes to start with. So I will stick her down and then work on the others and come back when they're ready to stick together. Okay, so I've done some distressing around the outside of those, but the vellum is a lot easier if you just rip it. So given that this browner piece is a little bit bigger than we need it, I've decided to just use my ruler and uh, tear the edges off, which is a lot easier than trying to distress them with my scissors. Here we go, and then it's a matter of sticking it all together. So I think we'll kind of go like that 
that, that, and that. Okay, let's see how dry the cardstock is. And dream catcher is gonna go here. Now, the photos, I thought that might happen. It's ended up being quite a bit bigger uh, than the uh, dream catcher. So what I'm gonna do is just go to the side there so that we can get the idea of it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put this onto the backing. I'm really interested to see what other people come up with for this challenge because for me it has been a huge challenge and as I said earlier I had quite a few goes and nearly gave it up as a lost cause um, oops oh I didn't trim off okay so I'll have to trim off a half an inch of each side so I'll just restick these edges that I've trimmed because I wasn't very confident, so I didn't trim the paper before I tried that last last chance mixed media. Right, so I need my mat. And using the mat just helps me to get this um, kind of even. So we're going, coming in half an inch each way. Next, I add the dream catcher, so I just need a little bit of tape on here. And if I put the tape on on this part, it'll just keep a few bits stuck down. I don't need to stick all the feathers down, I don't believe. I just need it to be stuck down on the top. Okay, so then these I can trim off a little bit and then just separate them so that they flow a little bit. Okay, and then I'll put the picture on. coming together relatively well. Yeah, now I'm leaving the title tool kind of near the end, um, but I probably need to do it now. I'm just going to put in here, uh, dreams do come true. So the Havana alphabet um, is my current favourite. It kind of suits this layout, I believe. And I'm going to do um, some secondary stamping first, and then uh, the actual word on top in a darker colour. So because this is um, a darker colour, I'm going to use the Close to My Heart Pewter as a secondary stamp, which means basically that you stamp it somewhere else first to make it lighter when you put it on here. So it's going to be kind of like a shadow. So I'll just stamp it off to the side and then come in with it. There. Okay, and then I'll come in with toffee to do the one that's actually going to be seen. If you can see that sort of shadowed effect of the other stamps underneath. So it just continues on with the sort of um, mixed media look. And then my next favourite is this block letter which is from the pennant alphabet and I'll just pop, probably use the smaller block for this. 
So when you need two different letters, or two letters that are the same, but you need them in two different places like this, so I'm writing do come, so I need this O also in here. So because I've put it here, I now have um, the gap worked out where it needs to go, so I can move it to that side of the C, and then I know that there's enough room to put it in there when I come back to fill in the gaps. Okay. I've got to leave enough room for true. Go here. Now I've got to put that O in And then we need the word true. Okay, for the final touches, I'm actually going to use some stickles uh, in different parts because if I use gems, I think they would be a little bit too rigid and um, these just have a little bit more of a go with the flow feel about them. Okay, I've also got these little um, little plastic die cuts or ornaments that I got from uh, some pack some years ago and I think they might look quite nice on here too. So just cut a couple of little hearts out that uh, nest together nicely and I'll just put those up the top there over the uh, corner just in there and one more little bit of stickles on the top there just to bring them all together actually I probably should have put that on some foam tape, so I will do that now while I think of it. I think that will be better. Yeah. Yep, that's better. So I think we're done. I'll take some close-ups uh, for the end of the video when those stickles are dry. I'm really happy with the outcome and thank you for the inspiration. When we look at the sketch, well, what was the inspiration? The we, the dream catcher is what got me and the flow of um, colours behind. So there's a lot more fussiness in, in that sketch. But in mine, it's more my style. So I'm very happy to put that in my album. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, do watch everybody else's video on this hop so that you can get some inspiration from them also. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today, perhaps you'd uh, like to subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. If you have already subscribed, obviously much appreciated. Thank you very much. Happy crafting, everyone.